Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about determinants. So we've actually started this before. We've done a determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. So what we're learning now is we're going to go bigger and um, figure out how to get the determinant of a larger matrix. So recall, a 2 by 2 matrix is invertible, meaning it has an inverse, if and only if its determinant was not 0. And so for a 2 by 2, that's the nicest one we're going to work with uh, for this a, B, C, D matrix, the determinant is just A times D minus B times C. And so one way to remember this is just to draw. So I would tell myself A times D and then minus B times C. So a, uh, down diagonal right minus down diagonal left. And that's how you get the determinant of a 2 by 2. Okay, so now let's expand. So for um, a matrix size n by n larger than 2, so 3 by 3, 4 by 4, and so on, then the determinant is the sum of n terms of the form like this. So plus and minus, where the signs are going to alternate, um, a sub 1j times the determinant of a, capital A, sub 1j. All right, so this is going to sound weird, but we're going to work through it. Uh, so you know what this notation means. So let's first talk about the notation. So remember your entries, we've seen this in the past, are um, just denoted with the subscript. So A sub 1 1 means the entry in the first row and the first column. A sub 1 2 means the entry in the first row but second column. And then this will be the entry in the first row but the nth column. Okay. And then capital A sub 1 n is actually a new matrix obtained by deleting, in this case, row 1 and column n. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take the entries in your matrix. Those are going to become your coefficients. And then you're going to make smaller matrices. That's what this capital A is standing for or denoting. And then you're going to find the determinants of them. Okay, so for 3 by 3, we just break this down into little 2 by 2s. So then the formula for this written out in symbols is the following. So this is the same thing as the sentence above. And so we start with the entry, column one, row one, times the determinant that we get from deleting row one and column one. And then we alternate signs. So then minus the entry in row one, column two, times the determinant or of the matrix that we get from deleting row one, column two, and so on, all the way until the last row and column. And then this is just our summation notation. So notice that we have this negative 1 to our power 1 plus j. That's because the signs alternate. That's where that negative 1 comes in. Okay, so let's try this out. We have a 3 by 3. We're going to compute the determinant. Okay, and so because it's a 3 by 3, this is what our formula becomes. And so we're going to go across row 1. But I'm going to show you soon after this that you can pick any row or column. But we're going to start by going across row 1. So notice that's going to become our coefficients. Okay, so let's label some things. So based on our formula, we have a coefficient in row 1, column 1, right here. And then we, we alternate signs. So then minus, this is a coefficient from row 1, column 2, right here. And then plus coefficient from row 1, column 3, it's right here. And what's left over, let's do this crossing out thing I mentioned. So how we get the matrix that we want the determinant of, in this case, this is A sub 1, 1. So what we do is we cross out row 1, cross out row 1, and we cross out column 1. And what's left is what we're calling capital A sub 1, 1. And so that's the matrix we want to find the determinant of. And because it's a 2 by 2, it's really nice and easy to find that determinant. So let's um, just cross out our rows and columns for the other one so you can see them. OK, so for this one here, this would be capital A sub, well, determinant of capital A sub 1, 2. So that means we're crossing out row 1 and column 2. And notice what's left over is a matrix with 2, 0 in the first column and negative 1, 0 in the second column. Okay, and then the third one. So the, the one in the middle is a little tricky because you have to kind of jump around this column that you crossed out. Just pretend it's not there. Okay, and then let's do the last one. 
All right, so a sub, capital A sub one three, crossing out row one and column three. And we're left with this two by two matrix right here. And we find the determinant of that. Okay, so here is our determinants. Notice we still have our coefficients. We still have our one, our negative five and plus zero. And so remember how this goes for a two by two, you just go diagonal down right minus diagonal down left. So that's what's here, okay? And you do that for all three of your new little matrices, your two by twos, and you just simplify. So the determinant of A is negative two. So the thing you do want to keep track of is your organization. Um, I would highly recommend not skipping steps because of how easy it is to lose little things like minus signs. Remember, you're always subtracting here. You have to alternate signs for your coefficients. So just write it all out, don't skip steps, and this will be fine. You'll be able to do this. All right, so another common notation for the determinant is to use vertical lines in the place of the brackets. So normally we would write like DET and then with brackets, our matrix. But if you just write these vertical lines and not brackets, that's the notation for a determinant. So this is saying one times the determinant of this two by two, minus five times the determinant of this two by two, and so on. Okay, so now we're going to talk about our cofactor expansion. And what this is going to allow us to do is to choose any row or column to uh, work with when we're trying to find our determinants. So it's convenient to write the definition of the determinant of A in a slightly different form. And so if our matrix A has um, elements A sub IJ, then the IJ cofactor is this value here denoted C sub i j, and it's just negative 1 to the power i plus j times the determinant of i plus j. Okay, so for example, the determinant of A would be L, the element in row 1, column 1, times this cofactor. And the, so notice what the cofactor is representing. It's basically taking the place of the alternating plus or minus sign and the determinant that you get from deleting row one and column one. And then you add that to the element in row one, column two times, and this would make it a plus or minus, and then our determinant from of the matrix when we delete row one and column two, and so on. Okay, so this is called the cofactor expansion, and this one's specifically across the first row. But what we can do is we can pick any row or column. Okay, so then we have a theorem here the determinant of an n by n matrix can be computed by a cofactor across any row or down any column. Okay, so your two choices are you can expand across a row. So if you choose the ith row, that could be the first row, second row, third row, and so on. Then your determinant looks like the following. Okay, so it's your element in that row times your cofactor, and then you add those up. And then you can also choose to do your expansion down any column. So your determinant would be your element in the first spot of that column times a cofactor and so on. Okay, so we'll do an example so you see what I mean. All right, so same fact and theorem. And what I want you to see is there's just like an easy way to realize if your sign is going to be positive or negative in this cofactor. You can just um, start alternating plus and minus signs down column one. And this is sort of a fast way to get whether you're going to use a negative or positive one. And so you just say plus, minus, plus, minus, and so on. And then in the second row, you start with a minus, and then go plus, minus, and you just alternate going down column one. All right. So our same example from matrix A, but this time we're going to do our cofactor expansion across the third row. So last time we did row one, we already know what the answer was. It was negative two, but this time we're going to pick row three. Okay. So we're going to compute the determinant of A using our cofactor expansion across row three. And so what that looks like is there's three components here now for each factor um, or term, excuse me, of the determinant. One of the factors is whether it's a plus or minus sign or plus or minus one. The second factor is your coefficient from that row itself. And then the third part, the third factor is the determinant that you get from the matrix from deleting that row and column. All right. So Let's see what we get. From row three, 
the coefficient was zero. This is going to make this a positive one, so it's like plus zero. And then what you get from deleting row three, column one, is this matrix here. So let me highlight those things. Okay, so we have zero as the coefficient, and it's going to be a plus sign from our coefficient right here. And then notice if we delete row one, or sorry, row three and column one, we have this two by two matrix here. So we want the determinant of this two by two. Okay. And then on the next one here, notice we have um, a minus. That's because we have row three, column two. So the power on negative one is five. So that's negative one to the fifth, which is negative one. So there's like an invisible negative one right here times our coefficient, negative two. And then remember how this goes. We delete the row, whoops, delete the row and column. And what's left here is one, two in the first column, zero, negative one in the second column. And that's this two by two determinant that we're finding. All right now let's do the third one. Okay, so we have a positive zero, and then if we delete row three, column one, we're left with one, two in the first column, and five, four in the second column. All right now, what I want to point out is using the shortcut for the um, positive and negative uh, one, the plus and minus signs. So remember, you could just say plus, minus, plus, and then the next um, column, or in the column one, the next row, you say negative, minus, then you start alternating, so plus, minus, and then the next row you would alternate from the one above. So it would be plus, minus, plus. So that's another way to realize that this was going to be a negative one. So if you don't want to write out the formula with negative one to the i plus j power, you can just write out the plus and minus signs and then know that that's going to be a minus right there. All right, and then after simplifying, we get that we, the determinant is negative 2, which we already knew from the last time, but we just found it a different way. All right, so now I want to show you um, if you have a larger matrix. So, so far, I've been picking some nice ones, um, 3 by 3s. So this one is pretty big. This is a 5 by 5. And so what you have to do here is any size matrix you have, n by n, you have to keep expanding a row or column until you get down to the two by twos and then you can use your nice two by two determinant formula so we are going to pick any row or column and what you want to do is you want to pick a row or column that makes your life easier we are going to pick column one notice why we want column one because almost all the numbers are zeros so that saves us a lot of work because we don't even have to compute these determinants if the um, coefficient is zero it doesn't matter what the determinant is of these um, smaller matrices because it's all zero. So th that's nice. All right, so here's all we have to really compute for this part. And then let me remind you how to get this. We picked column one. And so what we're doing here, right here, I want the determinant of little matrix A sub one one. So I delete row one and column one. And that's what's left. So I'm left with this four by four matrix. And remember, we have to keep going down, expanding until we get to a two by two. All right, so now, because we're at a four by four, we've got to keep going. We're going to pick a new row or column as we continue to expand. Any choice is fine. Okay, just copying what I already had written. And I'm going to pick column one for this one, just because it's nice again. Bunch of zeros makes our life easier. Okay, so now notice, if I pick column one this time from this new matrix, notice I'm calling it B, just so you're aware it's not A anymore. It's a smaller version. It was part of A, but it's a smaller four by four. So all these coefficients are zero, so it doesn't even matter what these determinants were in the back. We don't need to worry about them. We only need to do this one here, okay? So that one, we want um, the determinant of B sub one one. So we're deleting row one, column one, and notice what's left, this three by three matrix, which is right here, and that's B sub one one. Okay, now remember the goal, we gotta get to a two by two, so we gotta keep going. All right, so that I just did six instead of three times two, and one more time, because we're at a three by three, so we only have to do this one more time, 
This time, let's go ahead and pick row three. So I'm going to pick row three. And again, my choice is because it has the most zeros. I could also pick column three. It also has two zeros as well. Either one is fine. It's going to be the least amount of work, either column three or row three. So by picking row three, notice what we have. The coefficient from the first uh, entry in row three is zero. So it doesn't matter what this determinant is. It's just zero times it. And then minus negative two times the matrix we get from deleting this row and column. And then plus zero times this determinant, which again, doesn't matter because it's times zero. And so real quick, just remember your signs. If you do the shortcut, this was positive, negative, positive. And then this one would alternate, it would be negative. This one down here is positive, negative, positive. And so that's why there's a minus here. And then the negative two was already negative. So this is gonna turn into a plus sign. Okay, and then this was um, the determinant of the matrix when we get from deleting row three, column two. Let's look at our notation here, row three, column two. Basically, you just take this coefficient, negative two, and you delete its row and its column. And what's left gives you your matrix. So there's our two by two with one, two in the first column, negative zero, negative one in the second column. And then after simplifying, we get negative 12. So the, the determinant of this five by five matrix, we had to do it in parts and you want to stay organized. We got negative 12. So you have to keep expanding, picking a row or column each time, breaking it down till you get to a two by two, which you can do the matrices of, or the determinants of two by two matrices pretty easily. Um, this example, I picked nice rows and columns with lots of zeros, but in the future, if there's not rows and columns with zeros, just be aware that you're going to have to expand these determinants, the ones where I've gotten to skip them because it was just zero times them. All right, the last thing to mention is this nice theorem. If a triangle of a matrix is a triangular matrix, then the determinant of that matrix is actually just the product of the entries of the main diagonal. So remember, triangular matrices are ones where you have um, like zeros in the bottom left corner, basically, forming a little triangle here. So you start to row reduce this, and then once you get um, zeros under your pivots, then that's triangular. And so notice if you just multiply one times negative four times five, the diagonals, that's actually your determinant. So this is a really fast way if you can get your matrix into triangular form to find the determinant, especially if it's a large matrix. Okay, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.